Good morning. My name is Diana Ayala, and I am the chair of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing. I would like to welcome you all um, to our vote today on a package of bills designed to enhance worker protections for two groups of essential workers, deliveristas and hotel workers. We will be voting on seven bills today that relate to third-party delivery uh, platforms such as Grubhub, DoorDash, and Uber Eats, and how they treat their, uh, I'm sorry, let me take this mask off. Okay, and how they treat their contracted delivery workers. The seven bills include intro 2288A in relation to platforms providing insulated bags for delivery workers and intro 2289A allowing delivery workers to set distance and route limitations for themselves, both of which are sponsored by Councilmember Brennan. We will also be voting on intro 2294A from Councilmember Lander that would establish minimum payments per delivery Intro 2296A from Councilmember Menchaca, which would establish standards for payment for delivery workers. Intro 2298A from Councilmember Rivera that would ensure that these delivery workers have access to toilet facilities. And intro 1846A from Councilmember Chen, which would require the platforms to disclose information about how gratuities are provided to their delivery workers. The final pre-considered bill is a cleanup bill that addresses issues in some of the previous ones and is sponsored by Councilmember Brennan. Throughout the pandemic, food delivery workers have been on the front lines. When lockdown orders and indoor dining restrictions were put in place, it was the delivery workers that helped keep restaurants open and New Yorkers fed. Politicians and the public recognized them as essential workers and heaped much deserved praise on them. However, beyond the rhetoric, these delivery workers have had little substantive support. Most of the city's delivery workers are immigrants and many are undocumented. This means that many missed out on stimulus checks and other forms of government assistance during the peak of the pandemic. They struggled to get PPE and during the curfew, some of them found, found themselves the target of police enforcement, despite being recognized as essential workers. Just a few weeks ago, delivery workers were delivering food throughout, uh, through flooded roadways during Hurricane Ida. As independent contractors, delivery workers are not always guaranteed protection under all of the city's vast worker protection laws. Similarly, some of the conditions set by third-party delivery platforms force these workers to rush around the city, delivering orders in unrealistic timeframes just to maintain good customer ratings, but for very minimal pay. The package of bills we are voting on today aims to rectify some of the concerns raised by delivery workers. No longer will delivery workers have to worry about bathroom breaks on the job, as food service establishments will be required to provide delivery workers access to toilet facilities when they are picking up orders. Four of these bills will also directly improve the financial security of delivery workers. There will no longer be ambiguity as to how much delivery workers will get paid per trip, as the platforms will be required to establish minimum per trip payments for, for workers. There will also be no ambiguity for consumers on their tips uh, on where their tips are going, uh, to whether or not their tips are going to delivery workers, as the platform must disclose how much of each gratuity goes to the worker who delivered the order, how gratuities are distributed to delivery workers, and how much of each gratuity is used to compose each delivery worker's base wage. The platform will be required to provide insulated bags for workers, which will cut down on the cost required to become a food delivery worker. The platform will also be prohibited from charging workers any fees to receive payment, require that they be an option uh, for payment that does not require a bank account, and require that payments be made at least once a week. Finally, food delivery workers will be able to set their own distance and route limitations so that they can control how far they travel while working and they can avoid dangerous routes and unrealistic delivery timeframes. The bill that we will be voting on today is intro 2397A, which would require severance pay for hotel service employees. Is this right? I'm sorry. Uh, employees in the event of a hotel closure or a mass layoff. Uh, the hotel industry was hit hard by the pandemic and the hotel workers are in a precarious state. While hotel owners may look to sell their hotels to recoup their losses, this bill will ensure that hotel workers receive the severance that they deserve and not be left in the lurch if the hotel closes. I want to extend, extend special thank yous to all of the bill sponsors for their hard work on these bills, a los deliveristas unidos and the workers uh, justice project for fighting for these bills, and to the essential uh, delivery workers who kept the city alive and vibrant during its most difficult months. I am confident that these bills would improve the lives of all food delivery workers and provide them 
uh, the labor rights that they deserve. I will now turn it over to Councilmember Brennan. Is he he? Oh, there you go, Justin, uh, to give a statement on the on his bill. Thank you, Chair Ayala. Um, th this is a, a very big day. It started about a year ago, um, thanks to some uh, intrepid reporters from the city who really um, uncovered uh, what goes on with these um, largely immigrant, undocumented workforce um, who kept us fed uh, during the pandemic. And um, these bills really are an attempt to humanize um, the, the people who are doing the work um, in an increasingly digital and um, isolated world and remembering that um, there are human beings behind these apps who, who cook the food, who make the food, who deliver the food. So this is a first step in, in delivering some dignity and respect to these workers uh, who kept small businesses uh, afloat during the darkest days of the pandemic and who we rely on. Um, and. Um, in an indispensable but completely uh, unregulated industry. So, Chair, I appreciate you uh, prioritizing these bills and getting them done, and, and this, is, uh, this is a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Brennan. I now turn it over to Councilmember Moya to also make uh, an opening. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for the opportunity here. Um, as we all know that uh, how challenging this pandemic and uh, our path to recovery has been, it's been even more challenging for workers in the hospitality industry who are part of the hotel workforce. Uh, these workers have been the hardest hit by COVID. They represent our immigrant, Latino, Asian, and black communities. So we can uh, have a true economic recovery if we don't protect these workers' livelihood. Uh, this bill, intro 2397, creates an opportunity to put thousands back to work and provide a much needed economic lifeline to those struggling to make ends meet. It also creates an opportunity to incentivize the revitalization of New York City's hotel industry. These workers uh, are not only the backbone of New York's tourism economy, they are ambassadors to our great city. We cannot leave them and their families behind, uh, so I thank you for joining me uh, in voting to pass intro 2397. Uh, we have an opportunity to protect workers, their families, and mobilize our local economy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council Member. Um, I would like to recognize Councilmember Yeager. Good morning. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I'll speak very briefly, or as briefly as I can. Um, we frequently find ourselves here in the Council inserting ourselves into the private operations of business uh, and frequently above and beyond what we are allowed to do. So, for example, we are instituting a minimum wage scheme. We're not authorized by law to do that. The state of New York does that. Uh, we are what we call preempted. Um, we are uh, uh, inserting ourselves into contracts already established, and the insertion of government, the interference with existing contracts is a violation of the Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, something I speak frequently about in this council, and we're doing it again, so I'm not going to vote for bills that do that. <sighs> with respect to the um, uh, introduction 2289, um, I will uh, side with the NAACP that, which is concerned about the redlining of neighborhoods. If we create a scheme in statute that enables delivery workers to uh, uh, say, I'm not going to go to this neighborhood, I'm not going to go to that neighborhood, we will, I believe, very quickly find neighborhoods shut out from deliveries. And when that happens, we will find ourselves back here uh, in a new council screaming about the redlining of neighborhoods. Uh, neighborhoods that are not able to get service. So the NAACP, having reached out to all of us and told us about their concerns, I'm going to side with them on this topic. Um, and finally, with respect to introduction 2397, I believe in calling things what they are, notwithstanding what we choose to call them. Uh, this is not a severance bill, this is an unemployment bill. It's an unemployment benefits bill. And that's okay if we want to provide an unemployment benefits, as long as we pay for it, but we're not. We're shifting the cost uh, for something that we choose to do to other people. How do I know? Well, we have all of these fancy fiscal impact statements, and not a single one of them say that there will be a single dollar of expenditure to the city, I suppose, beyond the enormous amount of paper that we've been presented with this morning. So no cost to the taxpayers, cost to industry for something that we choose is the right thing to do. This bill is retroactive to over a year ago. 
And if we truly believe that that's something that's necessary and that's something that's wise, we should pay for it. But what we're going to do is send a bill to businesses for the last year and a half um, for, a, for, for a, a, a program or a plan that they were not anticipating. Hotels weren't making money while they were closed. Why do we think that we can now turn around and send them a bill? Now, if it's an unemployment insurance uh, or unemployment benefit, as I believe it is, we are again preempted from doing that. We can't create an unemployment package. The state of New York does that. We are preempted by the state labor law. So I will vote no on that as well. And uh, with that, I thank you very much, ma'am, for your time, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Um, I now ask the clerk to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on consumer affairs and business licensing. All items are coupled. Chair Ayala. I vote aye. Kozlowitz. I vote aye. Chin. Uh, permission to say a few words? Permission granted. Yeah, I'm really proud to be part of this package of bill that will really help out and support our hardworking delivery workers and the hotel workers. So I vote aye on all. Thank you. Kalos. Aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Go ahead. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm also proud to be one of the lead sponsors on the package of delivery worker bills today, intro 2294, which will establish minimum per trip payment requirements to guarantee that our delivery workers can earn the equivalent of the minimum wage. Uh, and I want to give big thanks to the other sponsors, to uh, Council Members Brannon, uh, Menchaca, and uh, Rivera, and to you as well as Chair, but especially to Workers' Justice Project for their extraordinary organizing of these delivery workers. It should not have taken us a pandemic, a hurricane, and flooding to recognize the basic humanity of a set of workers in New York City with some of the hardest, most dangerous jobs struggling to get by, um, and the fact that before the pandemic, that before the flooding, we allowed a set of uh, platform corporations, multi-billion dollar transnational corporations, to take what's obviously work, these are folks who go to work every day and work hard to feed their families, and restructure it as though they're like freelance independent contractors and therefore swept them, be able to pay them less than a minimum wage, not provide them any benefits, not provide them any working conditions. Um, that's a travesty for the country, and that would, will need to be fixed ultimately at the federal level or the state level. They, in my opinion, are workers and should be categorized as workers, and we should close at the federal or the state level the loopholes in law that allow them to be sweated. The fact, though, that that has not taken place does put it on this city where we have relied so heavily on these workers to do everything that we legally and possibly can. I won't speak to the other bills, but 2294, which establishes or uh, authorizes and requires the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection to do a study and then promulgate rules establishing minimum per trip payments, builds on the work this council did, groundbreaking work for Uber and Lyft drivers to do the same thing. Several years ago, we authorized and required the Taxi and Limousine Commission to do something comparable. It's been tested in court, Lyft sued to block it, it survived court challenge, and as a result, tens of thousands of Uber and Lyft drivers now earn wages uh, or payments. They are still treated as independent contractors, but the payments they earned are set to make sure if we believe everybody ought to take home $15 an hour for their work in New York City, that after their taxes as independent contractors, that after their expenses, they will do so. It is a structure that's not only legal but has been tested in court, um, and it's about time we got around to applying it to the thousands of delivery workers that have kept us fed during this pandemic through rain and hurricane and sleet and dark of night. It is important in those instances to tip your delivery workers well, and this will help you know that they're getting their tips, but it is critical that we make sure that they are paid uh, enough to live on in the city, and I'm honored to be part of the package. I want to thank everybody who's part of it, uh, and especially those workers for their organizing. I vote aye on all. Menchaka. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, colleagues in the committee, and especially those who have brought together legislation to help our workers, either hotel and the deliveristas. 
you know, I'm the uh, proud sponsor of 2296, and this bill is something that came to me through the voices of the workers who came to me in Sunset Park at, after a, a rally that parents were putting together against the DOE uh, inability to communicate with them in different languages. And so here there were uh, workers who I'd known for a long time, uh, delivery workers that were once day laborers, and when construction stopped on all sites, they moved uh, into delivery worker uh, space. They were already trained and organized in the day labor movement that we've been fighting for, and this council has been supporting day laborers, but they brought that energy into this work around delivery workers, and they said to me, they're charging us for our paychecks. And I thought, imagine if we were charged for our own paychecks, we had to pay a fee to get paid. That's what was happening with the delivery workers. And they were not getting paid on time for different reasons. And so we said, let's put some legislation together. Um, quickly, we found out that so many of those conversations were happening with members, with Rivera, with Lander, with Brannon, and myself. And we put together this package that is now before this incredible committee and this chair. And that only took a year to do. That is beautiful in so many different ways that this labor movement that started with immigrant voices, these are people who cannot vote in our, in our local municipal elections right now. They put power together and they made this happen. That is the power of what's happening today. And with these bills, justice will be restored. You've all heard of, and, and will continue to hear how important these workers are, but now we're putting action and law in the, in the, in the, in the aim for protecting these workers. This is gonna send a, a, a ripple across the country as other municipalities are gonna look to figure out how to regulate, uh, and it's just a really proud moment for this committee to really be offering that as a way through this historic moment. So I just wanna say thank you again for everyone who's supporting and for those who are signing on. Thank you so much, and I vote aye on all. Brennan. Aye on all. Jaeger. May I be excused to explain my vote? You may. Thank you very much. I agree with Councilman Menchaca, and uh, I'm proud to co-sponsor uh, Intro 2296 with him. It's the height of unfairness for an employer to cause uh, an employee to have a deduction to their paycheck not authorized by law in order to receive their pay that they've earned. Uh, and I join him in uh, supporting this bill. I vote aye on 2296. I agree with Council Member Rivera. Um, a basic human fairness uh, would seem to me that it's uh, impossible to fathom that we would deny somebody the right to use a restroom, whether it's an employee, whether it's a stranger. Uh, in a restaurant. It just doesn't make any sense to me, so I vote aye on 2298. And I would like to thank my neighbor, uh, the gentleman, uh, Councilman Lander, for helping me make the case clear and the record clear. Reclassification of workers is a purview of state law. We do not have the authority, legal to, the legal authority to do that, and uh, as such, we are preempted. And anything that we do that serves to reclassify uh, independent contractors is whether we think it's right or not is unlawful and so I vote no on the remainder of the bills. Thank you very much. Okay, by vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions. We have introductions 2296A and 2298A adopted by the committee. And by a vote of eight in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Introductions 1846A, 2288A, 2289A, 2294A, 2397A, and pre-considered introduction are also adopted. Again, but that's by a vote of eight in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstention. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you, Chair. <laughs>